these first three are probably the most three common used inside the physio rooms. So this first one here called notes, if I left click on that, this screen will pop down where, where it will allow me to add a note. So essentially when we add notes in the physio rooms, whenever we've had a meaningful conversation, such as a phone call or a, a conversation of note in practice, we will add a note to the contacts record. For example, every call that Barry had with you guys before you decided to go with Infusionsoft, he will have added a note inside your contact record inside of our Infusionsoft to keep a consistent track record of the conversations we have had with this person. The reason why this works so well is if you're in a business with more than one employee, you may not be the next person sorry to speak to this person may not be the last person who did. So there is a con constant chat record of what the conversations were. So for example, uh, downstairs, if Vicky was on the front desk and she knew that the next day or the next, the next time that person was in, that Becky would be on the front desk, Becky could check the notes that Vicky made on this person. And then in, in the dialogue with that person, Becky could say, oh, Vicky told me that, for example, you went on holiday a couple of weeks ago, or you're, you're struggling with this right now, or you're going through this right now in life. That adds to the patient experience. That gives the illusion that this person is being spoken about within the business and is thought of highly, when in reality, we're just adding notes to them inside their infusion of contact. So the way we would do that is hit this green add note button. And here is where we could simply title this up. So the first time that you would likely record a note about someone is perhaps an inquiry phone call. So say for example, I called you to inquire about back pain. In the description here, we would speak what was discussed on that phone call. So for example, Cameron called today to inquire about back pain. He has suffered for X amount of time. And his main goal is to X. Okay. Type. So this is essentially just how this happened. The two main ones we use are call and other. Other is just essentially an input an in-person conversation. Call is literally a phone call. Now, as you build this out, it might be something that you want to consider now is um, if you do have more than one uh, member of staff, you can add different users to your account. So for example, if Vicky, uh, in the physio rooms, everyone has their own users. So for example, if Vicky um, knew that she wasn't gonna be in the next time that Cameron came in, um, she could notify Jess or someone else in the system um, of this conversation taking place so that that can be brought up on the next time the person is in. If I hit this green save button, this note will be created under this contact forever and always. It will show you who created the note, when the date of when it was created, and also a quick description of what that note was. Tasks, tasks are slightly different from notes. Tasks are literally just that. They are a task that needs to be completed. So as we build out campaigns for you, you'll notice that a lot of tasks are completely automated, meaning that you don't have to do anything and they will be assigned to you. Uh, but if you wanted to manually assign a, a task to a contact, you would go into their contact record and you'd hit this green add task button. Now, essentially, one of the most frequent reasons we would use a task is if, for example, I was going on vacation and you wanted to create a task to follow up with me when I was back from vacation to see when the next time I was likely to come in was. Or another frequently um, used task we have is if I went away for some kind of minor treatment, such as a minor surgery, we would then call this a surgery follow-up call. And just say for the sake of this call that my surgery happened yesterday. So we assigned a task by hitting this calendar to today at 9 a.m. So we assign every task at 9 a.m. That does not mean that task needs to be done at 9 a.m. That means that is when you will be first notified that this task has to be done today. So we assign all our tasks to be first thing in the morning so we can see them throughout the day. The type, how this task wants to take place. So for example, a call. Priority, every task in the physio rooms is critical. Doesn't matter whether it's a surgery follow-up call or whether it's sending out a birthday card, every task is critical. And then in this description, we would talk about what that task is. So for example, Cameron went for minor back surgery yesterday. Follow up with him for protocol. If I hit that green save button, that task has now been complete. It has now been created as an incomplete task underneath this contact record. I will show you where all these tasks are housed in a second, but I'm just first going to go over appointments. Appointments are not physical therapy appointments. They are essentially phone call appointments. 
So where tasks are created in-house, i.e. the person does not know we're going to make this phone call, appointments are pre-agreed phone call times. We do not use these very often in the physio rooms. The only time we would use these is if, for example, I come in for a discovery visit or if I required some nurturing and I needed more time to consider whether PT was right for me or whether treatment was right for me, whether you guys were right for me, whether it was more costly than I thought it would be. Um, Vicky or Jess or Becky or whoever's downstairs would say, quote, okay, Cameron, am I okay to give you a call back at a later date to talk more? more about um, our treatment and allow you more time to think and more space to think. Most of the time the answer to that question is surprisingly yes. We would then pre-agree a time for that phone call to take place. So let's say I agreed to speak uh, again this Friday at 9 a.m. after I'd had more time to consider things with my partner, would go into my contacts and hit the green add appointment button. And then from here we would type in back pain follow-up call as the title or whatever you wanted to title it. The location is not important, and then we would need to pick a date. So, for example, this Friday at 9 a.m. Now, we these times are important, important in this example because this is specifically when that call is going to take place. And we always book out 15 minutes for a call. doesn't matter whether it lasts that long or not. We just do that. And then in the description, we talk about the pain points of why I wanted longer to consider. So, for example, Cameron needed longer to consider our price and discuss whether PT is right for him with his partner. As soon as I hit that green save button, the appointment has now been created for me this Friday at 9 a.m. And that is the user that created the appointment, so the user is gonna carry out the appointment. Any questions about those first three? Um, put a task, you can assign it to anyone, right? Correct. So like, we have like an admin. So right now, <clears throat> we, do, we use Asana, uh, for like task management, so it's like an app based on the phone. So is this can this be done like via cell phone on an app, or do they need to log in and then look at this? So the tasks. So there's an Infusionsoft app where you can see the tasks that are um, assigned to you that day. Uh, but these tasks would have to be in-house tasks. They're not always calls. So maybe can uh, maybe continue using that app for your calls and you can assign tasks, for example, for personalized notes or anything to be written out or sent out to someone, such as a shock and all package, anything like that. But most of the stuff, uh, a lot of tasks will be automated inside of your campaign, campaigns okay. that we build out for you. So I recommend that you do still use these tasks to an extent, but for um, ones you want to manually apply, uh, such as the example I just showed you, maybe you could still do that in the app, but you will be having tasks assigned to you or to whoever you want, such as your admin, through Infusionsoft as well. Okay. Okay. Now, where these are housed is under something we call My Day. So that's why I recommended underneath this Infusionsoft drop-down logo that you drag your My Day here. Um, if it's not there, it can also be found under the house emoji here at the top and this My Day button here. If I left click on that, I will be redirected to the My Day page. Here you can see all your tasks for that day. Equally, if I go to all tasks at the top here, I can see all the tasks previously. So if there's every, any outstanding tasks I didn't complete from like um, a couple of weeks ago, we can still see that here as well. If I go to the calendar option, I can see how many tasks I have on that specific day. I can also then see here when my next appointments are. So phone call appointments. Once, excuse me, I've done a task, so say I've done this phone call, you can tick off a task by just hovering over it and selecting this tick box. It will be crossed out. And if I then go back into that contact record, you will see that under tasks, this task is now moved from incomplete to complete, but there is still a steady chat record of tasks, so we can see everything we've done for this person. Um, with appointments, if I was to tick that off, that would also move to previous appointments. But just not to mess with anything, I'm just going to simply just delete this. I can do that by left-clicking on it. Here I can edit the user, so this is where you could essentially assign it to an admin. I can edit the, the description of it, or I could simply delete it by hitting this delete button. An error mess a warning message will come up, just select OK, and that appointment has been deleted. Um, um, just, yep. Do I get an email notification if the task is done, or do I have to go in and check it? You can that you can we can set that up for you on a later call. Okay. But equally, you could just go in and check as well to see all the all the tasks that have been ticked off. Okay. Okay. Um, underneath um, this emails icon here, this is really straightforward. This simply just shows you uh, what emails this person has received in the past, uh, or what they've done with those emails. So have they been delivered? Have they opened them? Have they clicked in them? Which means have they clicked a hyperlink or a video or an image inside the email? <clears throat> 
if the email bounced back. So what bounce back means is that the email has not been delivered. The main reason for a bounce back is usually um, user errors. So they've either given you an invalid email address or the email address you have is misspelled. Um, in very rare occasions, so Infusionsoft has, is the best CRM for deliverability. Something like 94 to 95% of emails are always delivered via Infusionsoft. However, the 5% is that bounce back. So um, that is usually user error or what sometimes we would like to do, I did not mean to hit on my email address then, I meant to hit my name. What sometimes you would need to do is um, confirm the email address. So we would never do this with a lead. We would only ever do this with a current patient. Now you will very rarely have to do this, but if you are consistently getting bounce backs from a patient and you know that the email is right, then what we need to do is confirm that email address. So what we would say is, okay, Cameron, are you okay to confirm your email address with us? I've been trying to send you some important patient documents and they keep um, bouncing back to us. They're consistently undelivered, in which case almost always the person will say yes. So we would go into that contact and here under their email where it says status unconfirmed, we're going to click this manage email status. And here we can simply just send an email notification. And once that email has been confirmed, I can confirm that it will never bounce back. It will always be delivered. Under this email section here as well, we'll display if ever anybody has opted out. If ever anybody has opted out, i.e. unsubscribe from your list, we no longer contact that person. Okay. Under orders, we can plug in um, apps such as Cash App, definitely PayPal, I'm not so sure on Cash App, but we can definitely plug in third-party payment receivers. Um, and we use this in the physio rooms, not for physical therapy payment, but we use this for upsell payments. So such as orthotics, yoga, pilates, that type of stuff. You can see a track record of this contact and all the money they spend with us on those under here. Tags is one of the biggest things in Infusionsoft. I'm going to spend more time on that in a second, so I'll come back to that. Internal forms. So as we build out these campaigns for you, there are web forms that will need to be filled in by you and your team. These are 20-second jobs, and every web form that has been filled in by someone will appear here. Equally, if this person has opted in for a report or filled in a web form on your website, for example, that will also appear here also. Campaigns. Campaigns is essentially what Campaigns is Contact is currently in what they have been in in the past, and what they are about to go into if the circumstance of the campaign remains the same. So I'll explain with tags in a second, but essentially some campaigns automatically send you into another one. So this is just a track record of that as well. These last two we essentially ignore, score and recent activity and opportunities. So Infusionsoft is a CRM for a wide variety of businesses, not just for physical therapy and medical niche businesses. So that's why we ignore these. This is Infusionsoft's way of what is describing what is the next best opportunity for this person or um, how worn they are as a lead. So we feel like we should have a good enough gauge of that on our own from the actions and conversations we've had with them. The only time we would ever use one of these two is if you, it, as this starts to grow when you have different um, web forms online, for example, that people can opt in on and contacts will automatically be created for you inside Infusionsoft. As that happens, say for example, I opted in for a, another report on your website, a knee pain report, and I used a different email address, a duplicate contact will appear for me. So what we want to try and have is consistency with the name and email address. If, I, if either the name or email address does not match up, a second contact will be created, what we call a duplicate contact. Now it's really straightforward to clean up this list if, if duplicate contacts do arrive. I'll show you how to do that at a later time. But essentially where we would use this one is, this is literally a five flame or five star rating of how warm a contact is. So say for example, there were two Cameron stores. One of them had three flames versus one of them that had one flame. Well, the three flames one is the one we want to keep because that's the one that's the most engaged. That's the one that's opening emails more. So we would either remove or merge the one flame contact with the three flame contact. That is the only time we ever use this. Apart from that, we completely ignore these last two. Are there any questions on any of these icons?